Guys, I broke my own rule. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Devin and today I want to talk to you guys about breaking my own rule. Now in previous videos I've shared with you guys tips and tricks on how to get cinematic looking footage, professional looking footage, the most high quality and best looking footage out of your drone and more specifically the Mavic Air 2. And one of those rules that I always talk about is try to keep a shutter speed of double your frame rate. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I will link them in the description below that you can check out how to get professional looking footage with your Mavic Air 2 and some tips and tricks on that. But in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about breaking the 180 degree rule or the shutter speed rule. Typically, you want your shutter speed to always be double your frame rate. So if you're shooting 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be 60. And that is what they refer to in the filmmaking world as the 180 degree rule. But I broke that rule. And I wanted to share with you guys that it's okay to break that rule. I've actually been breaking that rule a lot. But my philosophy is before you break the rules, you have to know what the rules are. So I still think it's important to learn why to shoot in those shutter speeds. And of course, it's still the best way to get uh, high quality and cinematic looking footage, but there may be times where you either have to or want to break the rule. I had a really good example that I want to share with you guys of a time where breaking the rule made sense. There is this awesome train bridge that crosses the lake uh, not too far from us and I wanted to catch it going across the lake. And I was only able to be there at a certain time of day so I didn't know if I wanted to shoot photo or video. I ended up leaving the ND filter off of the drone. It needed an ND possibly 16. Uh, it was a pretty bright and sunny day. So what I did is I decided to shoot 4K 60 frames per second to try to eat up as much of that light as possible, but also to get as many frames of the train as possible for both photo and video. But then I set my shutter speed I want to say it was above 500 on my shutter speed, which is way too much. If I'm shooting 4K 60, my shutter speed should be 120. So it's definitely way, way over. But what that allowed me to do is while editing, I could go back and take really crisp screenshots of the footage with no motion blur because I shot at such a high shutter speed, it came out with a crisp image of a moving train. And that would be a good reason that you might want to break the 180 degree rule. So whether you're shooting with drones, GoPros, especially when you're shooting manually, or if you're shooting on a DSLR, if you're ever in a situation where you may want to pull a still frame from later and you want that still frame to be sharp and crisp without motion blur, then go ahead and overcrank your shutter speed. Your video may not look as smooth and natural and buttery as it does when, you, when you're using the proper 180 degree rule, but for this one instance where you wanna pull a still frame out and possibly use it on social media, then I say go for it. I did it here and I am actually pretty impressed with the quality of the screen grab. Now, of course, the Mavic Air 2 does shoot 48 megapixels as well as 12 megapixels in normal shooting modes. But when you take a screen grab from 4K, if my math is correct, it should be an eight megapixel photo, which is plenty when it comes to posting on social media most of the time. So there you have it, go ahead. That is a rule that might be worth breaking once in a while and uh, feel free to break it. You can still get great looking footage as well as pulling a still frame out of your shot. And a quick tip, the best way that I've found to pull a frame from your video is actually through Premiere Pro or whatever video editor that you're using. As I'm viewing my footage, there's actually a button to export the frame that is currently on the screen and I can export it to my desktop and then from there I can put it into whatever photo editor that I want and clean up as I see fit. So this photo I edited how I wanted to edit and then I actually took it out and put it into Photoshop and I took out the fishing boat down below. 
If you guys are interested in learning more about photo editing and different things like that, leave a comment down below and maybe that'll give me some ideas of what to share with you guys as far as photo editing and maybe some Photoshop tutorials go. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. It helps my channel out so much. You guys rock. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all of my new subscribers and it's been so much fun making these videos. I hope that you guys enjoy and uh, yeah, I will see you guys in another video.